Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and I am here today with our Tuesday sewing tutorial. I am a little bit early because I have a scheduling conflict today, so I may not catch all of you, um, but I will post the replay to this so you can watch at your leisure. As promised, today we are going to be creating the stair step basket which I showed you all on Instagram and Facebook and this is what the original looked like and it was crafted from 24 9 inch squares and so there were a lot of seams and it was like a mind yoga assembling this and so I really wanted to simplify the process for our YouTube community. I taught this tutorial using the 24 squares to our Patreon community. And I do really like the design. It's just rather time consuming to make and a little confusing because of all the seams. So I have simplified the process down to six pieces of fabric so it'll be much easier for you and for time's sake i've already crafted the exterior of this the interior and the exterior come together in exactly the same way and so my exterior is crafted from a lightweight denim i think this was six ounce denim and it's really soft i did pre-wash hey suzette let me know can you hear me okay suzette i've got a new setup here and i want to make sure i'm not covering up the microphone if you'll just let me know if the audio is good that'd be awesome okay so anyways the exterior of mine is crafted from denim and i lined that with pelon 70 and if you're not familiar, that's a pretty stiff interfacing. You are welcome to use any combination of interfacing that you like to get the stability that you desire. So with the denim and the pelon, you can see how this, you know, it's gonna, it might tip forward just because there's not a step here, but it does stand alone. And I prefer that rigidity for this project. So your only consideration would be whether your machine can handle all of those layers. Um, so consider that. And then if needed, I think you could go with a home deck for the exterior, the interior, and then use quilt batting and still get enough stability that the project is functional. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the interior construction process now so you can see how to get the main body of this. So you'll craft the exterior in the exact same way. And then I'm going to show you the final assembly where we'll attach the handles to this. And if we have time left, I can answer any questions that you might have in the chat. So feel free to put those in. And so I want to go over the pattern pieces, which I also have set up a page on the blog if I can get in the chat myself. And I will put that link there for you. I don't even see where I can chat, guys. Yeah. Anyways, if you go to sewspire.com, you'll see. Um, and maybe Suzette, you can put the link for me real fast if you're able or someone can. Over on SoSpire.com, I just set up the super simple stair basket and you'll have the page, the pattern measurements there. And then after this video is done converting, I'll put the video on there too for anybody coming back. If you want everything in one spot, that's where you'll find it. So basically what you're going to need are a total of four pieces of material that measure 25 and a half by nine inches tall. And I just added some quilt batting to the back of this and then a couple random rows of stitching just to tack that batting down. And I have for the interior, 
two of those, and then the other two will be used for your exterior. So again, these are 25 and a half inches long by nine inches tall. And then you're gonna have one very long piece, which measures 51 inches long by nine inches tall. And it is perfectly okay to piece that together. So this project would be phenomenal if you use scraps to create these panels. So you'll need two of these really long 51 inch panels, one for the exterior and one for the interior. And if you're just joining us, my exterior is pre-made here. I use denim and Pelon 70. So for the interior, I could go a little lighter and I just use the Cotton Couture, I believe. It's uh, by Michael Miller Fabrics. And then Warm and Natural Batting for that. So it'll be really easy for me to work with. When you have that Pelon 70 up on the table, you know it's so stiff, you all wouldn't be able to see a thing anyways. So that's why I also opted to use the quilt batting for the interior. So to begin, we're gonna work with the two short pieces and what you're gonna to need to do is mark halfway on the length of one of those and halfway on the short side of one of those. And we're just gonna create a giant T. And so you're gonna align your two halfway points there right sides facing and I will hold this up for you in just a second so you can see what that looks like. And so now I just want to stitch across the top of that. But what I'm going to need to do, and this is pretty important, is I'm going to need to leave my seam allowance on each side unstitched. So for this, I'm using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're welcome to take a more generous five eighths of an inch if you like. Whatever you go with, just be consistent. And if you need to, you can put marks so you know where to stop. I'm just going to gauge that with my eye. And so I'm gonna begin a little bit in to account for the seam allowance and I'm gonna stop a little bit short to account for the seam allowance. So you'll notice if you went to the Sewspire page towards the bottom of that, I have the order of operations. These are basically like my cheat notes um, for how to remember how to construct this again. And so uh, the first step was to make the T and then I need to attach this T to the 51 inch piece. And so I have that right here. And it doesn't matter which end you pick, but you're going to want to attach the top of the T to one of those ends so that the short sides are aligned nice. So the top of that T should span about half of the distance across your 51 inch piece. And that up for you. So there I have my T on one side of that big piece. And so same thing, I'm just going to stop short of my seam allowance on this side that's falling on the middle of the 51 inch piece. I can stitch all the way to the end on the other side. So I'll start here and I'll just bump in a little bit because I need to leave room for that seam allowance.
way across. And I do not have a name <laughs> or a letter that represents what we have here, but we have the long 51 inch piece at the top, then the top of the T, and then the tail of the T. Okay, so the next step in the process on my order of operations is to form the basement. I think of this little stair basket like a two level condo. And so we're going to create the basement here first. And so this larger piece is your second story. And then the remainder is the basement and the floor and sides of both the first and the second story. Okay, so if you're making your first one, just uh, watch this video and hit pause so you don't get too confused. We're going to take this edge here and align it with this edge here. And so I'm just going to fold that over. And I think it's super helpful to clip or pin this in place. If you really get confused, go ahead and just try and clip everything in place before you sew so you can see what that looks like. I think it is definitely easier just to sew one segment at a time though. So with this piece here, I can stitch all the way to the seam, but I do need to start short to allow for that seam allowance. And again, we're, what we're doing right now is forming the basement. So this would make more sense as it comes together. basement I have a floor now and I have two walls so now I'm going to take this other side here and join it now I'm just trying to keep that fabric as lined as much as possible so that my corners look good. Okay, and now I can start sewing right at the seam, no problem, but I need to stop short for the seam allowance. basement and three walls. So now I'm going to raise up that fourth wall there. And I want to clip it in place. And I'm going to go ahead and attach that opposite side there and or clip it in place as well. Okay, now you do not want to sew all of this up, okay, because part of this is becoming the floor for the second story, all right? 
So you really only want to take that first little spance there, which is from the seam to the seam. So you don't have to stop short on anything. Just so seam to seam on both of those sides that we just clipped up and that's going to create the whole basement here. machine came on thread. I'm still really loving this jukey here, but I'm also not as fast threading it as I used to be. It has a much different threading mechanism, so you'll have to bear with me for just a second. I hope everybody's doing good as we enter into fall here. The temperatures are cooling off in Virginia, which is lovely. Also with this machine, I'm learning how to use the uh, automatic threader, which has been uh, fabulous because the eye of the needle is sideways on this. So it, it would be seriously tricky to try and thread that by myself or anybody who's just joining us we're making a stair step basket today yay it worked okay so now the danger of getting interrupted in the middle of making this is you could potentially forget where you were with this so luckily i know i'm still fashioning the basement of this and I could see where the holes were. So again, I'm just stitching seam to seam. And as best you can, try and keep that fabric aligned straight and the corners nice and tidy. So now the basement is completely in place there. You can see that is the cube there at the base. And this becomes the floor of the second story. And then the rest of this just wraps all the way around to create that second story. All right. Hopefully that's making sense to you. I am a visual learner, so I have to just picture this as it's a little building going up or I would get super confused. So the next step is to attach the side of this really long piece here to the side of the floor. So whatever part has the long piece, that's where you're going to be working right now. So you're just going to align that. And here you're going to need to stop short for the seam allowance. But here, because it's the last seam on that side, go ahead and butt it right up to wherever your stitching starts.
part of my floor installed. Now I need to bring this long tail around to the next closest side of that floor and I can start right at the seam on this left hand side but I need to stop short on the right hand side. I have one more side to attach to that floor. And so I'm gonna bring that over and pull it nice and tight. And I'm gonna start stitching at the seam and stop at the seam. you can really see the basket taking shape on this side it looks like it is complete on the front we're doing good there's just one more seam left to make and you do have a little extra fabric there and that is just for um, security purposes there if in case you were misaligned or took a little bit too much uh, of a generous seam allowance there you'd still have plenty of play you just don't want for this to be too short so the last thing that you need to do is line this up nice and straight and then stitch from the top to that seam there oh man i unthreaded this again i think it's because i'm leaving the foot down sorry guys it also could be this thread too. I switched to a different kind of thread that I had bought when this whole COVID pandemic shut in started and I didn't know if we'd actually be able to get supplies. And so it's kind of inexpensive thread, but it's on a big spool. So I think it's kind of curling up and that's what's going on. But it's giving me good practice to thread the machine all right so back to this here i just have to align that final seam nice and straight and then start sewing at the top and stop right at that seam done and you can see I have my second story and my basement and we have walls and a floor and everything is in place so I do want to trim off this excess here where I made that final seam and you are welcome to trim up any other corners or seams that you like depending upon the interfacing that you chose you may want to kind of angle the corners. I did do that for the the exterior, which had the Pelon 70, because when I turned it around, I wanted the corners to be nice and neat. The quilt batting is so easy to work with. It's usually not a problem. I'm going to try and hold this up for you all to see what that looks like. And so now what I want to do is fold that top edge over. It's about a half an inch. With this, I think it will be fun to have just a little bit of that pink pop up over the top of that denim. And then I have selected some black webbing for the handle. So all in all, I think it's gonna be a pretty sharp piece. 
I think it would be really fun to monogram this stair basket. I think it would make a lovely housewarming gift or even a Christmas gift. Imagine if you made one, put monogram on it, and then left it on someone's doorstep, right? The little stoop filled with goodies for uh, Thanksgiving. That would be really sweet. I know we have a lot of seniors that aren't getting out and other people for that matter too that are just high risk or not comfortable getting out. So consider leaving a Goodwill basket on your neighbor's step this holiday. And if you will let me know if you did so, I'd be so grateful. Okay, so here's my nice and sturdy exterior. And I just want to take that interior and fit it inside of there. And so you obviously put the two-story side on the two-story side and the single story on the single story. And I like to begin at the back of this. And you may have to adjust on the original one that I made with the uh, 24 squares there were seams at every single intersection so it was really easy to align it this one is going to take a little bit more fiddling because i have no seams i'm just going purely upon the sides of that so i may have to adjust after i get it all clipped in place let me know in the comments if you have steps in your house that you could use this on. Right now, I am using mine um, to toss. I have it on the steps that go from the second level to the main level, and our laundry is on the top level, so I use it to like toss the uh, dish towels and stuff from the day inside of there, and then I take it up when I go up the next time. So you gotta kind of feel like this. Excuse me, guys. That warm and natural daddy makes me sneeze every single time. Woo. At least I'm not in public, right? The sneeze is no longer welcome. <laughs> okay, so I have that second story in there pretty good. But I do do not like the fit of this at all. So, I think I'm gonna need a lot more clips. And I think I saw Suzette put in the comments that she's using hers in her car, which it does fit over the hump in the car. And this is going to take a lot of clips because of the differences in the interfacing. And if I have my iron hot, I could probably get this done faster for you too. Okay, I'm getting closer. Who remembers the stair baskets? They were like a thing in the, I think it was in the 80s, maybe in the 90s. And they were made obviously out of wicker and were actual baskets. The benefit of making it out of fabric is you can wash it. Okay, I'm getting much closer. So don't be discouraged if you think you don't have a good fit initially because the more I work with it, the better the fit is getting. But I could tell it's going to take some time. And I think it would be super helpful to press as well. But it's definitely, the more I move it around, the better it's fitting, dispersing that. So just keep working it. And I think I'm in a good place with that right now. Here's 
what it looks like and I could continue to fiddle with that and get that batting to grip that pellon and it will lay nice and smooth. But I think we're okay to move forward to the next step. So I'm gonna set this right here and I have this, let's see how big it is. It's one and a quarter inch webbing. It's really thick, really awesome. It feels like cotton. I'm not entirely positive that it doesn't have a little polyester in there though, but I ordered it from Big Duck. Super thrilled with it. And I will put the link to Big Duck. I have an affiliate, an affiliation with them. And so if you wanna support the channel and use my affiliate link, that is awesome. I will put that in the notes after I get off here in the tutorials process. So for the first one, I thought I cut a 10 inch strip, but that looks way too small. So let me actually try and measure that. Uh, yeah. It was not a 10 inch strip. It was at least 16 inches. So I'm gonna make it a little longer. So I have plenty stuff down in between the layers and reinforce. So I'm going with 19 inches on this. And I came in on the sides of this approximately four inches from each side on the top, I positioned those handles, but you do have a lot of freedom as to where you want to position yours. So, um, you know, just fiddle with it, clip them in place, carry it around with the clips and see if you're satisfied with the proportion of the handle as well as the functionality, right? Is it wide enough for you to put your hands in there and bring both handles together? Or do you need to adjust a little? But I love how that looks. And so once you get a look that you like on one side, then you could just flip that over and align the strap on the opposite side. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. I really like it. I'm just fascinated by these. Okay, I think I'm ready then to sew the top on this. And so this new machine does not have a machine deck for me to remove, but if yours does, I think that will make it easy for you. I just kind of have to clear space here. And I apologize because it's gonna flip up in the air and you guys aren't gonna be able to see much, but uh, for the parts that you can see, hopefully it'll be helpful. So I like to begin at those handles just so they don't get away from me. And so I'm gonna start with that first handle. Bring back my clips. And I'm actually gonna start a little bit ahead of it. And I'm just aligning the edge of the foot right with the edge of the fabric. And when I get to that strap, I am gonna back stitch a couple times to reinforce. This here would be the thickest point where that side seam is on the exterior and that pillow on 
70 crosses over. So worst case scenario, if your machine can't clear this kind of bump, I call it, just go as far as you can, back stitch, and then um, once you get everything else in place, you may be able to like hammer that section and break up those fibers just a little bit. Or you could even just put a drop of glue in there and call it a day. But I did find with the first one, which I did the pedal on on the inside and the outside, it was crazy firm that I did have to loosen those fibers a little bit there, but eventually I was able to get through it. You could also hand crank your machine. back around on that second side where the handle was um, you want to pay attention that the handle didn't shift too much Stair basket. Oh, it's so awesome. I really like it. Let me hold up the two so you can see. I think I really like the one with the three pieces a lot um, better. I think the additional seams on this one may be kind of distorting the shape of it. And then, of course, as you um, iron this, you can press in some more uh, you know, stability to it. I also feel like you might be able to stitch in those corners if you have a heavy duty machine or rivets could be great as well. I love the pink 
with the black handles and I just want to give you all some excuse me sorry guys I want to give you some measurements on this it is approximately 16 inches tall by 17 inches long and in the basement it's eight by eight so thank you all so much for sewing with me today next tuesday we'll be back to the two o'clock time i apologize for anybody i threw off by showing up a little bit early today and we're going to revisit the small press lock purse i have some gorgeous wax canvas that's been sitting here waiting for me to play with and so if you remember i think it was the press lock tutorial that the mic was going bad on me and so it's a great pattern but the actual tutorial we had some trouble with the mic so we're going to revisit that tutorial we'll remake it i'll add a few updates to the pattern and that's what we're going to make next tuesday and then the following tuesday we should be super duper close to 50,000 subscribers so we're going to sit down and plan out our 50,000 subscriber subscriber celebration and I want to do things that you guys would enjoy. So I definitely would love your input on that. So that's what we're gonna do at the last Tuesday of October. And in addition, I'm gonna share with you all the Sospire story, how this channel came to be and the journey that I have been on and how uh, my why has changed significantly from when I started the channel, okay? So thank you so much for coming today. I'm just going to try and see if there are any comments there or questions. And then I'll let you get back to your Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Let's see what's happening. Hi, Cheryl. I hope everything's okay at your house. Uh, not normally at this time. No, Ornelia. I had to pop in a little early because I got a conflict with my schedule this afternoon but I didn't want to bail on you guys because I didn't see you last week okay yes it, it's so much easier to make Suzette and it would be really easy for you Suzette made the one with the 24 pieces with me so this would be much easier for you to make having just the three cuts one in the car would be great Cheryl thank you Sally I know you love your pink Okay, so I missed this at the start. My stair treads are only 29 inches. How wide is your basement? Eight inches. So, oh, so it doesn't sit, Ornelia, you know, it doesn't sit long ways on the step. The um, actual step would be right here. So as long as your stairs, the depth on your stairs, right, is eight inches or more this should fit but certainly you could keep reducing the measurements right so if you take an inch off of that long panel you would take a half inch off the short each of the short panels and just keep going until you get one that fits your step I mean here I think we have pretty average size steps they're not long or short so hopefully that helped you as you try and figure that out. Uh, an outside top stitch on the long seam would be great. Yeah, it could be, and you could definitely, with your top stitching, you could definitely add in those kind of pattern markers, right? So it'll be easier for you to align the interior and the exterior. You could do something decorative like that and sew vertical stitches, whereas on this original, I absolutely, you know, had the seams so I could align them absolutely perfectly. Uh, so that's also an option. If you did want to do the 24 9 inch squares, you need 12 of those for the interior, 12 for the exterior, and you would just join them six for that top big piece and then three for the uh, top of the T and three for the base of the T. And that may be easier for you all to work like that, but I just wanted to be able to create this tutorial if you needed a simpler way 
Plus, it takes a really long time to make all of those seams. So, Okay, so again, thank you for joining me. I'll give you a proper goodbye, and I hope to see you next Tuesday for the Press Lock Purse. Until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have an awesome Tuesday, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.